We're going to take a look at arrays now. And arrays are just a way to hold multiple instances of the same data. So if we looked at variables, uh, except for my typo here, uh, we declared this variable first name as a string. And it can hold one thing. So if we want to hold two things, we'll have to repopulate that variable with the second thing. And then we would have to repopulate it with a third thing. So if you can imagine us moving down rows in our worksheet, um, if we had a first name and that first row, we would, uh, in, the, in our loop, in the first row, we would populate the first name with whatever value was in there. Then when we loop to the second row, we would repopulate that variable with whatever was in the second row in the first name column. So it can only hold one thing at a time. With arrays, they function much the same way variables do. Uh, we declare them, uh, we give them a name, but arrays have a parentheses. And in that parentheses, uh, we can tell how big the array needs to be. Uh, and we declare it as a particular data type. And now we have five positions for first name. So in the first loop through our data, we can stick the first row uh, name here, the second row first name here, the third row, the fourth row, the fifth row, etc. So we only have to declare it once and it creates multiple positions that we can stick data into. So if you think about it, um, we have a couple of different ways to declare arrays. The first, uh, we do the name, uh, we can just tell how many positions we need. So we have five pieces of data we want to hold, so we need a five position array. And if we do this, our counting starts with zero. So the third piece of data is actually in the second array address. And array address number three holds our fourth piece, fourth piece of data. So our counting is off by one, which can cause us some grief. So to correct it, we have two options. At the very top, right under um, option explicit, we can enter option base one. And if we do that, all of our arrays will now start their counting with one instead of zero. But it will impact all arrays in the sub. So maybe we want to do that, or maybe we don't. Uh, the way we're going to do it in this class is we're going to actually give an array address. So we're going to declare our array. We know it's an array and not a variable because it has a parentheses after it. And we're going to tell the first position to start counting and then how many positions we need. So here we're going to count one to five for our five position array. And now in our third array address is our third piece of data from the third row probably. So we're going to uh, just uh, try to, to wrap our mind around using arrays. So we're going to, to put this into an actual uh, Excel worksheet and see if we can get it to go. Um, we're going to declare an array, a five position array. Um, and arrays are going to be tied very tightly with loops. So we're going to use our loop counter and we're going to create a loop. Loops will be from one to five in the next loop. Uh, so when we're in loop one, array position number one or array address one equals one times one. Then we're going to go to loop two and array position two or array address two equals two times two or four. So we should be able to see this fill across. So let's see how this is going to work. So we put our code in here and using this, we would assume that on the third loop, uh, into price list, uh, the array position or array address three uh, would be three times three or nine. So let's see if that actually occurs. And it looks like it's working. And we could easily change this to five. And so on the fifth loop, in the fifth array position, we would assume five times five or 25. So this is just some random data we're creating Notice that our array addressing is tied very tightly with the loop. On the first loop through, we're going to fill in position one. 
one thing I can do is declare my array empty. So if I have the open and close parens behind it, I know it's not a variable. I know it's going to be an array. But this array doesn't have any idea how much data it needs to hold. It doesn't know if I have one or two rows of data or if I have a couple thousand rows of data. So I'm going to use the notion of in rows and counting the number of rows to be able to redimension my array. So here, I think I've got my rows counting correctly. I'm dumping it out to a message box. Let me see. So it looks like I have seven pieces of data. And if I look at my row number, 7R, I can see there are seven pieces of data. So I'm finding it correctly. So now I want to redimension this array from one to the number of in rows. So I declared it empty because I have no idea how much data it needs to hold. And then I will figure out how much data it needs to hold using the counter here. And then after I do that, I will redimension or redeclare my array from one to that total number. After I've redimensioned it, I'll create a loop that's as big as my data, so from one to in rows. And so now my loop number will correspond to my array address. And then I'm going to populate the array address with whatever value uh, is in that uh, in a cell. So I started with range A1 offset by one row, no columns, two row, no columns, three row, no columns, depending on what loop I'm in, get the value. And then the last thing I'm doing is I just want to see, I want to test my array uh, to make sure I'm getting the information correctly. So dump out the number that's in the third array position, which should be one, two, three, should be the number 13. And that seems to be working correctly. So let's test the boundaries. So let's check the first array position. It's getting that correctly. And then let's, we know there's seven rows of data. So let's check seven. And we can see that works correctly. So now my array size and my rows are both flexible and they're tied together. If I were to come in here and add additional data, I should see this now go up to 11 rows. So my first message box is counting the number of rows, 11, that's true. And then it's finding what's in position seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is 17. Let me check 11. Twenty-one. So it's getting populated based off of this loop. When I redimension arrays, it can overwrite the information that's already in there. So I redimension it, in this case, one to n rows. Uh, let's see, I think there were 11 rows. So one to 11, it populates all that information, and then I can return it and get 21 back. If I were to redimension this again, Uh, let's see if in rows is picking up 11. So let me just make a 50 space array, one to 50. And then return it. I should see um, the first time through, I should see the number 21 come back in my message box because it's in the 11th array position. But then if I redeclare it to a larger array, what's going to happen is those first 11 array positions are going to get wiped to zero and my message box the second time will come back zero because it was wiped away. So let's test this. So I'm at this message box right here. So I declared it empty. I counted the rows. I made it that size. I populated it and now I returned the 11th position, which was 21. So now if I were to redimension a second time and make it larger, so I went up to a 50 position array, it's going to overwrite and this next message box will be zero. So if I want to redimension an array, 
but I want to keep the stuff that's already been populated in that array in there. I don't want it to be overwritten. I need to use the word preserve. So now I've created an empty array. I figured out how many rows of data I have, and I've redimensioned that array to be that size. I've populated it with the values by going down through the, the cell. And then I return the last array position, 11. For whatever reason, I decided I needed to make this array bigger. I needed a 50 position array. And now when I put preserve in there, the 11th array position should come back as 21 again. So let's see. And it does. So it's preserving the information that's already in the array. It doesn't overwrite it. So preserve will be uh, pretty important to us uh, as we redimension arrays to make them bigger uh, and we'll redimension them on the fly in the program. So I can have multi-dimensional arrays. Here I'm set up for a two-dimensional array. I want to count the rows and load that information, but then I also have the columns to worry about. So when I look at my data dimensions, I'll have five dimensions tall, one, two, three, four, five pieces of data, or five rows, or five records. For each one of those records, I'll have three things I want to capture, name, profession, and award. So when I do that, my array looks like this. I still declare it with parentheses, just like I did. Only now I'm going to tell it how many rows I want to dimension and how many columns I want to dimension. This is just a two-dimensional array. And then I'll have to do row and column counting, so I'll need I and J counters. And then if we look at this here, I'm going down the um, row. So one, two, three, four, five. And here I'm going through the column, one, two, three. So I'll go to the first row. Then I'll go to the first column, second column, third column. Then I'll go to the second row. First column, second column, third column, third row. First column, second column, third column, okay? So that's how I'm moving. I'm going to populate those array positions based on my I and J counters. So this first time for uh, Descalso, um, it would be the one, one position will be his name. And I will get that by using the cell one, one. Then on the second column, it would be the first row, the second column or his uh, profession, baseball. And I'll populate that from the first cell second column, first row, second column. Then on the third one, it would be the third position in the array. The first, first record, third position would be the first row, third column. Starts to get a little tricky. After each loop through a player, so after I'm in loop one, I'm going to grab the three pieces of data, name, profession, and award. Then I'm gonna dump it out into a message box looks like this. I'm just pulling out the position information that I want from the array. So it'll look like this when it runs. So I'm in the first loop or the first row. So it got his name, it got his uh, position, and it got his award. And I'm pulling those out of the one, two, three position in the array. So these can get kind of tricky when we do multi-dimensional arrays. Here's another way that we can use arrays without using multi-dimensional arrays. Multi-dimensional arrays are incredibly useful uh, when, they, when they're needed, uh, but they are kind of difficult to get your head around. So we've just created three different arrays, person, profession, and award. We created them as empty arrays. 
Um, then we're going to count uh, the number of uh, loops that we'll need. Uh, and then we're going to count the number of rows of data that we have. So the first thing we have to do is figure out how much data do we have. So we're going to start at A1. We're going to go to A1 down, populate that information. And then we're going to redimension each of those three arrays to be that large. So this is assuming that we don't have any empty spaces in our data and that our data is all the same length. After we've redimensioned them to be the size of the data, to be the correct size, uh, then we can start a loop. And on the loop, uh, the first loop through, we're going to do it the number of times that we have data. On the first loop through, uh, we're going to load the person array, the first position with A1 offset um, I-1. Because if we do just I, it would offset by 1 and we would skip Descalso and we would skip baseball and we would skip World Series. So we actually have to do I minus one. So on the first loop, we wanted to offset zero, zero. It would be a minus one. At the end of this loop, we have all of this information into three different arrays, a person array, a profession array, and an award array. Person array position one, is this same, it's on the same level as the profession array position one and the award array position one. So position one will grab the first row of data across all of these. The third position will grab the third row of data across all of these. Again, our data has to be all together. We can't have any blanks. Uh, it can't be of different size. So now all of that information is in our array. We can dump it back out. So we're going to just loop through again. And for every one of these loops, we're just going to dump the information that is in that position in the array. So on the first loop, it's going to dump person one, profession one, award one, or the information in the first position of the array. In the third loop through, it'll do it for number three. So our array is all here and it's stored in memory. And now we're going to dump it back out. Let's see how this works. and it looks like the information is dumping correctly. Now, the other way we can do this is using cells instead of that, um, the range and the offset I minus one. Uh, here we can do uh, cells starts in the top left of our data, goes to the bottom right. So cell I one, this would be row column. So cell uh, row one, column one would be Daniel Descalso. Row one, column two would be baseball player. Row one, column three would be World Series. So I counts our rows as we're looping and it would return the same piece of information. 